What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please consider hitting that subscribe button, and I really appreciate your support. All right, so this video is going to be part two to working with VCAs or mixing with VCAs. Last week, we took a look at the basic workflow. We set up some VCAs for our different groups of tracks. In this video, I wanted to kind of go over a couple other things with respect to VCAs and some additional workflow stuff. So we have our mix that we've set up. Uh, it's pretty good in terms of our gain staging. We've got a relative level set that we've done and we've adjusted these by putting together our static mix. I'm gonna go into channel mode on my fader port and now I can scroll using the fader port as opposed to using my mouse. So, one thing that I wanna talk about is gain staging. And I'm not gonna give you any rules. You do whatever you wanna do because the gain staging rules when you're working entirely within a modern day DAW are very different than when you're working with analog gear and incorporating gear. That being said, my preference is to still gain stage the same way that I used to in terms of being able to incorporate analog gear and look and aim to get my levels in a more of a sweet spot when working. And this also has to do with the actual main outs and in terms of how my mix is summing. Let's go ahead and play from the loudest spot. And if we take a look at this VU meter over here, which I've calibrated to an 18 scale, which means that zero VU on the VU meter is a representation of an average level of minus 18 dBFS. And I'm gonna adjust my sensitivity so that my needle's moving around where I like it. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with this and I want that to be my new starting point. Now, because we know the way VCAs work, let's expand this view a little bit. I'm just going to come in here and we can look at the actual volume automation view. So when we see this here, because our VCA for our drums is minus 5.2, you can see that we have a gray line behind here. Let me just zoom in a little bit up here. And then we have the blue line over here, which is representing the offset of what the VCAs did. One thing that's a good habit to get into is that once you're happy with where your levels are in general, it's a good idea to merge that VCA information so that your actual source track is not working with offsets. What do I mean by this? Okay, well, if you're coming from other DAWs, such as Pro Tools, this is something that you would refer to as coalescing VCA automation. In Studio One, the terminology is merging. So what this means is that we're essentially going to write this offset into the tracks, but it's not anything that's gonna be destructive. So if I right click over here, in fact, let's start with the strings because that'd be a good example. I'm going to right click and the idea is that we want to merge the VCA automation. And what I want to do is let's pull a track into view. So for example, this one, this is a great example because it will show exactly what's happening. I'm going to click my strings VCA and let's scroll so we can see this information over here. Now keep in mind this, we had this gray line and this blue line. So I'm going to click this, I'm going to right click and I want to merge VCA automation. Now, a couple things you'll notice. First of all, all of these went into read mode. Even though we don't necessarily have automation written, a new static level was written for these. And also, if I click this over here, you will see now that this one, let me come back up here, this has now been written. We have a new VCA level that's been written for our strings. Our strings VCA has snapped to zero. So what we can do is we can select all these and I can go from read to auto off because this was just actually a static adjustment. So I'm going to do this on all of the VCA faders. I'm gonna merge the VCA automation and this will snap all of our VCA faders back to the zero point. That's really nice because it gives us a little bit more resolution. Now you'll see that all of these tracks have gone into read mode. Let's select all of these and I'm gonna set these to off. So now we have gain staged our mix using the VCAs and the great thing is that if I wanted to make any additional changes, so let's say I wanted to come back to my VCAs and I'm just going to use my scroll wheel on the fader port, I can come to any one of these VCA faders, bring this into focus. I can solo out all these VCAs, bring them up together. If I wanted to make any offsets, maybe my bass is a little loud, I can still go ahead, bring this down, and I can really fine tune my mix in general. I can pull down these VCAs a little bit. And this is all about getting this to a point where you're completely happy with your mix. 
The other cool thing that we can do, let us actually, let's merge all that VCA automation that we did. I've got a shortcut to do this, so I'm just toggling and using my keyboard shortcut. So I'm gonna merge this VCA automation and let's come back to the beginning and we'll take these guys and we'll put them all into auto off mode. Now, let's say that you wanted to write some automation on a whole group of tracks. So for example, I'm going to take these tracks, let's scroll these into view, let's view the volume automation on these. And in fact, this is probably a pretty good color to use for showing exactly what's happening here. Okay, so here is our volume automation. Let's say that I wanted to automate a specific section of my mix and I wanted to automate all of these tracks. And keep in mind, I have not grouped these tracks. I've not created a mix group yet. This is simply using the VCA workflow. So let's scroll to my VCA fader for the strings, which is this one over here. And now what I wanna do is I'm going to put the actual VCA fader into touch mode. Now I'm gonna press play and now I'm gonna write some automation here. Let's bring it up and let's bring it back down. Okay, so I just wrote this VCA automation on the VCA fader. Let's put it in read mode. If we scroll up to all of these tracks over here and I was to zoom in, you'll notice that the background display, you can see that VCA automation that was written. Now, even though there's no automation on these actual tracks, watch what happens if I play these tracks. In fact, let's solo this out as well. So watch the levels, watch the faders. So these faders are actually responding to the VCA automation that we wrote. Now the interesting thing is that if I wanted to, for example, readjust the static mix of these, if I solo out these channels and I wanted to listen, and I say, you know what? Okay, this one, I wanna bring this cello up a little bit. I can bring this level up and you'll notice that that VCA automation came up with it. So I can still adjust the static levels. And these tracks are basically behaving as if though I've automated them. Now let's say that I'm completely happy with this automation and I wanna commit it. And I actually wanna commit this automation or render it into the tracks that are associated or being controlled by this VCA. Like we know, we have our option to right click and we can merge our VCA automation. I'm gonna scroll this into view so you can see what happens here when I click this. Merge VCA automation. Now I've merged this VCA automation into these tracks. Of course, these tracks are now in read mode because they have automation breakpoints that have been written. So if we go ahead and play now. Now let's say in the context of the mix that I don't like where those levels are sitting and I wanna offset those levels. So at this point, because we still have the VCA fader, I can adjust their level. I could bring them all down or I could bring them all up. If I'm happy with that level in terms of that static adjustment where I just offset those tracks, minus 4.5 dB, right click, merge VCA automation, that then becomes the new level and this fader is returned to zero so incredibly useful to be able to use VCAs when mixing. Now, one other thing that I wanna point out, I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, how is that different than groups? Or how is it different than just routing them all to a bus channel and controlling a bus channel? And you know what, those are good points and hopefully this video has helped clear some of those up. But another big point that I wanna deal with is, let's say that I was using a bus channel the cool thing with VCAs is that if you have your reverb sends coming from the source tracks, then because these sends are all essentially a post fader send, as I'm adjusting the level of this VCA fader, really any one of these VCA faders, as I'm adjusting this, the relative balance between the reverb send and the reverb return here, which to be honest, I have had muted through the duration of these videos, that's still retained. So you're not throwing off your entire mix by grabbing a bus channel and lifting it up 3 dB, and all of a sudden your dry signal is now 3 dBs louder than the balance between your dry and wet that you had before. 
Obviously, it's different if your send is coming from the bus channel, but this is another area where VCAs are awesome. So if you haven't used VCAs and if you've heard people talk about VCAs, hopefully between this video and the previous video, this is enough information to kind of dip your toes in the VCA water. And I got to be honest with you, once you start using VCAs, they're such a powerful tool to be able to adjust and take control of your mix. And they really simplify things because this is, what are we looking at here? 15 channels, which essentially, once you have these balanced, and if you're happy with that balance, I mean, at that point, I'm basically looking at a balance that I can control over six faders. And I've got a lot of control over these faders. I can pull my levels up and down. I can solo and mute these different groups. I can balance them off against each other. And then of course, if ever I need access to the source tracks, then I can go ahead and do that. Now, one other workflow that we can do is, I know a lot of you guys are using folders for your bus channels. And then if you link your show hide options in your console, that's pretty cool too. So if I select these tracks, right click, and then I pack them into a folder, what I can do with this folder track, if you open up the inspector, is instead of connecting it to a bus, I could actually take this folder track and I could connect it to the drums VCA. So now this VCA, the expand and collapse, is linked to my actual console because that's the way I have my options set up. But essentially this acts as a fader control that is kind of like a group control for all of these channels. And then if I had this collapsed, it would be very easy for me to balance these channels and get the levels I'm looking for. And then for example, I could also take these three channels and I could create a bus for these. So add a bus for selected channels. And then I could call this drums. I like to do capital letters and these two arrow things for my drum channels. Now these are all coming out of drums but my main VCA channel is linked to a folder. And now any levels that are being pushed by this VCA are being driven into this bus channel. This is a great tip for if you have a compressor on it or something, you can drive up your drums into the chorus and they hit the compressor a little bit harder, bring up the energy and stuff. So this is just worth experimenting and worth exploring. It's an awesome workflow. I use it all the time. It helps gain staging, it helps with mixing. It's incredibly useful in terms of automating groups of channels together. It's incredibly useful in terms of if you already have automation and you just need to offset it or bring everything up by one dB without messing up your automation. Great way to use VCA channels. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll do my best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.